And on the bench today is a Commodore PET 2001 mainboard. This was sent to me by my friend Chris in Texas. He had a go at trying to repair it, but wasn't getting anywhere, so he asked if he could send it to me, see if I could get it working. He didn't send the whole computer, just the board. I have another PET that I can put this in for testing. The date codes on the chips are 80 and 81. And this probably started life as a 2001-16N. You can see here, uh, Commodore drilled holes in the board here for this lower section of RAM. And someone at some point put sockets in and patched over the damaged traces. This wasn't uncommon back in the day. Commodore drilled holes in these so people wouldn't buy the lower RAM version and then upgrade the RAM themselves. They wanted you to pay for the full 32K. So far, I have dusted the board off with compressed air and with a dry brush, get the cobwebs and dust off as much as I could. I also uh, cleaned the contacts on the edge connectors here. And I've gone through and given it a good visual inspection. I have my 2001 on the bench here, so I'm going to take the PCB out of mine and put this one in. So I have Chris's PCB in the pet now, and mine over there on the bench. So I guess we'll turn it on and see what symptoms we have. I'm not worried about turning it on now, because I know Chris has had it on recently. Let's turn it on and see what we get for symptoms. And it doesn't look like we're getting a picture at all. On the vertical refresh pin on the video connector here, we're getting 60 hertz. And on the horizontal refresh, we're seeing 15.6 kilohertz. That looks right. So actually, we are getting a video signal here. There's just no picture. Since there is a video signal there, on a hunch, let's try this. The monitor's been on for a second, and the computer's warmed up. So I'm going to turn it off and right back on again. There we go. Oh, and now it dropped into a machine language monitor. But it's not taking any input. I removed the 6502 and installed the Tine Mouth board. I have that configured to replace all the RAM, all the ROMs, and I have the ROMs configured for BASIC 2. And even though we have all the ROMs and all the RAMs replaced, we're still dropping into the monitor with no keyboard input. So now instead of the Tine Mouth board, I have the Romulator in there, and that's configured to run diagnostics. Well, diagnostics are good so far. Screen, RAM, and video seems fine. I have to look up the ROM checksums. Keyboard showing all FF which is not right, and not responding to any keyboard input. DRAM test is looking good so far. Yeah, one full pass DRAM looks okay. All FF on the keyboard makes me suspect we might have a bad 6520. I'm going to swap the two 6520s around. One of them is for the keyboard, and the other one is for the IEEE port. So if we swap them, if the keyboard one is bad, maybe we'll get the keyboard working. Keyboard is still showing FF. So what is going on? Put the time mouth board back in there. And it's still configured to replace all the RAM and all the ROMs. So maybe it's something that's neither RAM nor ROM. Fortunately, I have some spare parts sitting right here. So I'm going to try swapping some of the I.O. chips. First, I'm just going to lift these 6520s and see if the system starts up without them. You shouldn't need the IEEE and... One of them is going to prevent the cursor from flashing and not allow any keyboard I.O., but we can deal with that. Oh, 
Well, that's interesting. I put just one of the 6520s back to see if the symptoms return. Symptoms did not return, but we don't have keyboard right now. And I moved that same 6520 over to the other socket, and now we have keyboard. No doubt we wouldn't have any IEEE I.O. right now, but keyboard's working, cursor's working, system seems to be fine. I removed the tiny mouse board and replaced the original 6502, and I've got the 6522, 6520. One of the 6520s is still removed. And we're still good. So it looks like a bad 6520 right here. And I'm going to put an X on it. And I put that chip back in there for a minute just to confirm. And with that chip installed, yeah, no picture, just like before. Or drop into the monitor with no keyboard. It's interesting. Something in that 6520 must be dragging down address lines or data lines on the bus. I happen to have a spare 6520. This is not an MOS. This is a Rockwell chip dated 1983. And we still have a good startup. Now I've got a bunch of things plugged in here to test all the I.O. ports. Cassette drive, user port, and IEEE port. Let's try cassette port number two. Looks like cassette two is working. Set port one seems to be working too. Let's try the IEEE. Yeah, that doesn't look right. I'm using my pet SD plus over here. And uh, Appears to be working partly, but the data corrupted. Maybe that 6520 spare that I had isn't actually good after all. So I pulled out that Rockwell spare that I had and borrowed the 6520 from my pet. Well, that's much better. So that 6520 is no good either. Let's test out the user port while we're here and see if the 6522 is any good. Using the joystick tester here. Left, right, up, down. Left, right, up, down, fire, fire. And the Wi-Fi modem works on the user port, so it looks like the 6522 is fine. Well, apart from that one 6520, everything else seems to check out. Well, I'm all out of 6520s, but it's a few days later. And I ordered these from Mouser. These are Western Design Center 65C21N. And the N is important. Uh, the N version of this chip should be a pin compatible replacement for the 6520. We're about to find out. Let's see. And we're getting a good directory. Looks like the IEEE is working now.
Well, it's good to know they still make these chips. You can get these at Mouser for about nine or ten bucks each. Well, I guess that's it. This pet's back to working just by replacing one 6520 chip. I'll try to get this board packed up and shipped back to Chris as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.